Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to everybody, those who are here and those who will be seeing us via technology. Uh, before we begin the competition, we need to ask everyone to please turn your cell phones off completely. Not buzzer, not silent, not sunshine, we think nobody will be able to turn it off completely. And all other electronic devices, um, we do not interrupt the presentations. We want to thank our four local Jewish schools today, the Deposit of the School, Dr. Klein Jewish Academy, Czech Hill Community School, and Yeshiva High School. Thank you for being our community host. It's a great place to be here in West Palm Beach. Um, you are in the Fergozo Division, and today in this room, you will hear from American Hebrew Academy, Jack Barrett Hebrew Academy, Herzl Leo High School, Tenenbaum Chad Kimmel Center, Weber School, and Yeshiva High School. We'd like to thank the judges and ask if they would please uh, introduce themselves by name to everyone in the room. My name is Arvin Jaffe. Hi, everybody. I'm Eva Vespanon. Hi. I'm Barry Finkbrenner. And thank you to the judges who are not here joining us today, but who invested uh, a great deal of time and energy to read your written cases as well. Uh, uh, by way of brief overview of the competition, each team will have 16 minutes, eight minutes for presentation and eight minutes for Q&A. Uh, we have a timekeeper who will be, Benji, thank you. He will give all the teams a one minute warning and then a 30 second warning. When the time is up, even mid-sentence, you must stop. Okay, you do not need to use your full eight minutes for presentation and judges, you do not need to use the full eight minutes for questions. There'll be a five minute break between each team. At the start of the break, the timekeeper will announce the time that the next team will start. You'll be given the opportunity to flip your technology, get settled on the stage, okay? Uh, and there will be two longer breaks uh, spread out throughout the competition. After the final team has presented, there'll be a lunch break for our guests in the ballroom next door and for the student teams. Um, the lunch will be out on the patio and we'll be followed by a closing ceremony in Ballroom E at about 1230. Thank you all and best of luck. First team, please. Rather, he removes the barrier. 
the Arukhashu Khan rules that even extreme pain is no justification for suicide or active euthanasia. And I quote, though the patient is in great agony and he deems death preferable, nevertheless, we are forbidden to do anything to hasten his death. Rabbi Yaakov and Per Keavo taught the importance of giving the dying person a short amount of time at the end of their life for repentance and reconciliation. He claimed that one hour of repentance and good deeds in this world is better than all of the time in the world to come. The Beit Dean believes that the Halakha favors the bypass operation, but we would like to review all of the options and their merits. The bypass operation, option A, has slightly less than a 50% chance of saving Lee's life but he might live for a number of years if the operation is successful. We are not permitted to consider quality of life or longevity in the decision to save a life. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein ruled, concerning a very old person who has become sick, we are certainly obligated to treat him however possible, even if the old person doesn't want treatment and says that his life is a burden. It is forbidden even to consider such words. If we cannot assess the value of a life based on age or mental state, we must consider the Alzheimer's dementia not to be relevant. Only Leap's organ failure can be considered in the course of treatment. This problem has a solution, surgery. The passive option, option B, would leave Leap unconscious until his soon approaching death. This option could be justified if we said that the Alzheimer's disease is relevant. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein also ruled, if physicians cannot cure a patient nor ease his suffering, they should not administer treatments that only serve to prolong briefly the terminal patient's life in misery. Late stage Alzheimer's disease may be regarded medically as a terminal disease, and surgery will not cure it. Most rabbinic authorities use the term trefa for a patient whose death is expected within 12 months. However, Rav Cook focuses on the nature of the illness rather than exclusively pro the projected time frame. From this perspective, the risk and pain of heart surgery might not be justified, only leaving Lee as a still terminal patient. The passive option, leaving Lee sedated until he passes, could be a compassionate choice, leading to a natural death. Lastly, medical management, option C, would leave Lee in the hospital in a conscious state, but with only a couple of weeks or months to live. This third option would also avoid the pain and risk of surgery. The Shohan Aruch rules that the sick should have time to put their worldly and family affairs in order. This time would also allow Leap's family and friends some time to say goodbye. Rabbi Benachim Meiri ruled, even if it is clear that he cannot live even one hour, a person should be rescued from a collapsed building, for in that hour he may repent in his mind and confess. Perhaps on some level, this additional time would allow for Leap's spiritual preparation as well, something of the Jewish tradition values. Leap's case presents many conflicting values. Firstly, the treatment must be therapeutic or palliative. The best option will provide a cure, and if that's not possible, it will leave leap of pain instead of inflicting or causing additional suffering. This value argues against option C, or medical management. Secondly, the reasonable chance of cure outweighs surgical risks. Although there is a minority opinion that emphasizes at least a 50% success rate, many sources approve risky surgery as long as there is a real chance of saving leap's life. So this value supports option A, or the bypass surgery. Thirdly, the natural course of death should be respected. If Leap's death is inevitable, then it should be accepted. This understanding can stop the use of painful, painful treatments in order to draw out or cheat death. This value favors option B, or passive care. Additionally, it is desirable to have an opportunity for spiritual and family closure. Even though Leap's mental condition might inhibit his ability to take advantage of this opportunity, we must consider the possibility that Leap could be conscious before completely stripping him of this right. This value argues for option C, or medical management. Lastly, Leib must be treated equally and without neglect. Although Leib has dementia, Jewish law forbids us to deny him the full medical care or to see him as subordinate. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein rules against discriminating against patients whose wisdom can be considered reduced. With the doctor's estimation that Leib could survive a few years, this value supports option A, focusing on the heart condition rather than his Alzheimer's dementia. Considering halachic priorities and the unique details of Leib's case involving two terminal illnesses with complex mental and physical aspects, Leib rule. First, all three options have halachic justification and are therefore permitted options. Second, as guardian, Shana should consider what her father would have chosen had he been competent. Lastly, Leib rule, the bypass operation is the best option. 
It is the only option that actually treats Lee's condition and gives the possibility of saving his life. We offer our ruling with great respect for Shana's ongoing, admirable, and loving care for her father. Thank you. relates to something in your um, that you did in your written uh, presentation, which one of the things that you did, which I was pleased to see, was you included a description of Alzheimer's disease in your, in your paper. Um, now, you, you've said that the, the Alzheimer's disease uh, is secondary to what's going on, but if, if you look at what you've written in, in this, and what you learned from this, hopefully, you know that there are many uh, current illnesses and comorbid conditions that occur with Alzheimer's dementia. Now, did you consider that at all? Do you know that at all? Or how would you find out about whether he has other problems related to his dementia? And would that, in fact, affect your decision? We decided to focus on the heart disease rather than Alzheimer's dementia because Rabbi Moshe Feinstein argues that we shouldn't discriminate against people who could be you know, considered um, subordinate or lower. So instead of focusing on what could be or could have happened from the Alzheimer's disease, we want to focus more on the heart disease. Thank you. And, and, and I apologize. My, my, my question really, and again, it wasn't clear. Um, we don't know certain things about Lee's condition. So what if Lee, for example, had st uh, stage four pressure ulcers, you know, very severe skin uh, breakdown, or he had um, episodes of infections and things of that nature prior to his heart attack, or other problems. Um, we don't know whether he's bed bound or whether he's still able to walk around. We don't know whether he eats or whether he has a feeding tube. And so what I'm realizing is if we knew more about that, could that affect the then effective decision that's made. I think had the assignment paper been more clear with what his issues are, we would have definitely considered it, but because it mentioned he had Alzheimer's and then brought up the fact about the heart disease, we threw that the heart the heart attack, that was more prevalent and that was more important in the issue. Hi, good morning girls. Um, do I need to use the mic for the video? I do, okay, because I'm quite loud. Um, first of all, wonderful job. You know, just fantastic, it's all beautiful girls up there and very impressed with you. Um, as a woman, two four women, what I'd really like to know is, and whether this in any way impacted your decision, is specifically about Shana's quality of life after you made the decision about option A, right? Because if, hopefully, her father will survive, but then you know the home care that he would have to go through, and it's her primary responsibility. So, how did that impact your decision? Did it? And have you thought about that? I'd like to know. So, upon for reading the sources that we have in our paper, um, it is clear in the Torah that a child is supposed to take care of their parent no matter what mental state they're in or physical state they're in. It is very, very crucial that they take care of their parent just as your parents have taken care of you from when you were a baby until now. So then it did impact your decision? Yes. Okay. Um, a little bit more on that, please. Because you said it in your written sources, but when you gave the presentation, you didn't really focus on that. There are some opinions who emphasize that if caring for uh, a parent who is, who is you know, ill-stricken, there, you can appoint um, someone to, you know, someone to care for them instead of yourself. But the Jewish law does push and does emphasize that we, that children should be taking care of their parents. 
Thank you. Chorus. Um, the Rambam mentions that you should a child should care for his parents, that even if they're demented, and I think that could mean that if anything is wrong with the parent, then like so they said, the child can take off of work and put aside their life just to focus on their parent because their parent is more important. One of the one of the presenters, I think the second or the third, said that in your argument that you were not allowed to consider the quality of life in the decision. Was that not allowed because of the halachic views or not allowed because of your considerations? Um, from the source that we look at, it would be the halachic view because uh, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein ruled that you shouldn't take into account the quality of the person's life, so you shouldn't take into account the age of a person or the mental state of a person. And when it comes to the actual lifespan, whether or not it be terminal or not, Rob Cook says that it shouldn't matter if the if it's terminal or not, you shouldn't take into account trait file, which is the 12 months, but you should take into account the uh, the chance of living. Thank you. Thank you.